Hi guys, this week I'll be sharing uh, in the book of Joshua, leave, uh, starting off where Ace left off. And um, so whenever I study a book of the Bible, I usually try to um, look at a general overview of what's going on in that book and try to come up with like a theme and what what this book is trying to tell me in my life. And so uh, in, in Joshua, just the overall theme from everything that I looked at looks like uh, victory is the, the theme of the day for that. Uh, Israel had wandered for 40 years and finally had come to the point where it crossed Jordan and was able to take the promised land. This is, uh, to me, a, a picture of salvation of the uh, Israelites wandering for 40 years, and then they uh, are able to cross over into the promised land through faith in, into um, that land that was, that was promised to them. And if you uh, remember from some of my Sunday school lessons in the past, if you were in my class, 40 is uh, interesting because it's a number of permanent change. Um, and so the, the Israelites had wandered for 40 years, and now they have a permanent change crossing over Jordan through faith into that promised land that was given to them. Now, in that promised land, um, we've always heard, you know, it's flowing with milk and honey, but they are, they are still many battles to happen. And to me, that's a picture of salvation. So we're saved. But we still have day-to-day -day battles. We still have to drive out the inhabitants um, of, of the promised land, which to me represents um, sins in our life. We have to take hold of those strongholds that are in our life and, and get rid of them. And another key in this book to me is obedience. Uh, the, the Israelites were... Um, obedient in some ways, and they were disobedient in some ways When once they entered into the promised land. Um, some positive things that they did was marching around Jericho. Uh, I could see where that would be a test of faith, going around Jericho those many times and, you know, hoping that the walls would fall. I'm sure there was uh, some some doubts in their minds at different times. And then, but they but they did it, and, and the walls fell. Um, and then, also, uh, times where they had lack of obedience, uh, where they didn't drive out the inhabitants that were in the promised land, and that continued to, to haunt them for, for years to come. So to me, that's kind of the general overview is that, you know, it's a, it's a theme on victory of finally getting into that promised land, but then uh, also um, a picture of obedience that... Um, when they were obedient, God blessed them. And when they were disobedient, you know, it came back to bite them. So we'll go ahead and start where Ace left off. So Ace left off in chapter 15. I'll be starting in chapter 16, and we'll just break it down into a few different sections here. So in chapter 16, it starts out in verse 1. And the lot of the children of Joseph fell from Jordan by Jericho unto the water of Jericho, on the east to the wilderness that goeth up from Jericho throughout Mount Bethel, and goeth out from Bethel to Luz, and passed along unto the borders of Archai to Adaroth, and goeth down westward to the coast of Japhletai, unto the coast of Bethoron the nether, and to Gezer, and the goings out thereof are at the sea. So the children of Joseph and Manasseh and Ephraim took their inheritance." So as we're continuing on, um, we are looking at this uh, continued split of the promised land that was given to the children of Israel and specifically here to the children of Joseph. And remember of the, the 12 tribes, the, the tribes Manasseh and Ephraim um, come from Joseph. And I thought it was very interesting that they were given the portion that was right in the heart of of Canaan, a very fertile area, um, and it stretched all the way from the River Jordan all the way to the Mediterranean Sea. So basically, um, Joseph's family received the benefit of that whole beautiful portion right down the middle of the Promised Land. And I thought um, uh, that was really 
kind of interesting. Um, and this was foretold in Genesis 49, 25, 26, um, through the blessing of Jacob, and then also in Deuteronomy 33, 13 through 17, through the blessing of Moses. But I thought that's neat that uh, here Joseph was such a faithful man of God, you know, through um, being sold into slavery and, um, you know, rescuing his brothers and Potiphar's wife and everything that he had been through. He was so faithful, and it seems like God blessed him and the, the legacy that he had, the generations that followed him. So that was the thing that I really got out of that section. Now on to uh, verses 5 through 10 through the rest of the chapter here. And the border of the children of Ephraim, according to the families, was thus even the border of their inheritance on the east side of Atroth Adar unto Beth Horon, the upper. And the border went out toward the sea to Michmethad on the north side, and the border went eastward unto Tanath Shiloh and passed by it on the east to Genoa. And it went down from Genoa to Ataroth and to Nerath and came to Jericho and went out at Jordan. The border went out from Tapua uh, westward unto the river Cana, and the goings out thereof were at the sea. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Ephraim by their families and the separate cities for the children of Ephraim were among inheritance of the children of Manasseh, all the cities and their villages, and they drave not out the Canaanites that dwelt in Gezer, but the Canaanites dwelt among the Ephraims unto this day and serve under tribute. Um, to me, the the main thing that I get out of that is that the um, the the children of Israel there, the descendants of Joseph, they didn't drive out the Canaanites that dwelt in Gezer. Um, and it said that they dwell among them even unto this day. So as we said before, I feel like this represents sin in their life, um, things that they did not drive out and get rid of once they entered into salvation, into that promised land. And it continued to be a thorn in their flesh. And probably even still today, um, remnants of the people that they left behind are still a thorn in Israel's flesh unto this very day. Um, so overall, you know, the take home points for this chapter are, um, you know, the book of Joshua is leading a victorious life. I think it represents salvation as they crossed from a barren desert, crossed the uh, Jordan River through faith into the promised land. But then it's still, even though we're in the promised land, we're in salvation, we still have to uh, fight battles. We have to drive out the inhabitants, the strongholds in our lives, um, and we have to be obedient to God, even when it doesn't seem like um, things that make sense to us sometimes, just like the walls of Jericho probably didn't make sense to them, but God uh, won the battle for them through their faith. Um <clears throat> And then in the specific reference that we looked at in, in Joshua 16, that chapter, uh, I thought it was interesting about Joseph's uh, faith, faithfulness and how God blessed his family, and then also how they left the inhabitants in the land and um, they became problems for them for years to come. So that's chapter 16. So that'll be the lesson for today. We'll pick up tomorrow in chapter 17. Thanks for listening. Hope you maybe got a little something out of this and um, God bless you.